Well, I think it's important just because once you get in, you have a chance. You have a chance, you're in the tournament. And we want to have a consistent program, a consistent winning program. You know, the reality is that we're playing for an opportunity to win the division, an opportunity to, to make the playoffs. So it's, it's you know, winning is the foundation of everything that we do, but it's not okay just to compete and, and not end up winning. We, we have to win. And like I said, we can go back and we can look at all these games where, man, you guys are really competitive, but you know, we just came up a little bit short. And there's been throughout the last six weeks some really, really competitive moments. Unfortunately, you know, not good enough and not consistently enough. So, you know, we'll just have to put it all together this week. It all comes down to this. A battle between Tennessee and Jacksonville to crown the AFC South champion and secure a spot in the big dance. Titans All Access gets you ready, and it starts now. But there he is, the Yuli Bulldozer, Derrick Henry. Touchdown, Titans! Chig Akakwo, Joshua Dobbs takes the Titans home. It is intercepted, fired on a deflection. Fires, and it's intercepted, fired. Welcome to the Bet MGM studio and Titans All Access with Amy Wells. I'm Mike Keith, and this is it. This is it. This is it. Saturday night in Jacksonville, Titans and the Jags. It's win and you're in. Essentially, it is the first game of the playoffs. It is the AFC South championship game. It is indeed, and this is not an unfamiliar opponent. No. The Titans did see the Jags on December 11th, didn't end up winning that game, but there were some bright spots. Yeah, the problem was the four turnovers, but the Titans did get off to an early lead with touchdowns from Derrick Henry and Chiga Conquo. In the game, Derrick Henry had 20 touches for 154 total yards. The defense limited Jacksonville to just 60 yards rushing. It was, it was pretty good, but the turnovers gave them no chance. Yeah, four turnovers and no takeaways is not a recipe for success. So Mike, what does this team need to do to get the win in Duval? Well, Amy, I'm so glad you asked because Coach Dave McGinnis is ready to show us three plays from the game against Dallas last Thursday night. And these are examples of exactly what the Titans need in Jacksonville to get the win. Coach Mack taking us beneath the surface. Hey guys, Coach Mack here with this week's Beneath the Surface, powered by Microsoft Surface, beginning now. Today we're going to look at two defensive plays, one offensive play from the Titans game with the Dallas Cowboys. Tennessee Titans are in 11 personnel, which is three wides, one tight, one back, and a shotgun with an offset back. Dallas is in a four-man front. Motion by Hooper, the tight end, to a three-by-one set. Single receiver to the defensive left with McMath with top of the number split. Dallas mugs the linebacker over the center. He has the running back man-to-man, -man, and the safety to the single receiver side drops down as a middle-of-the-field robber. McMath weaves the man-to-man -man corner and then hits the Jets to create separation. The post safety cannot get over fast enough. Excellent protection. Dallas runs a TE game to the offensive left. Picked up very well. Nice cylinder for Josh Dobbs to step up and throw a perfect strike to McMath who adjusts very well to the deep throw for a 39-yard explosive play. Next play we're looking at here is first and 10. Ball's on the 39. There's 21 seconds left in the second half. Titans are in a four-man rush with wide alignments. They're playing man-to-man -man with a post safety and a low hole wrap. Titans four-man rush executes a well-timed TE game to the right side and an excellent ET game to the left side. Kevin Byard has the on-the-line tight end man-to-man -man in a press alignment. Excellent end phase on the hip of the tight end on the outcut. Perfect timing to step in front and intercept the pass and a 28-yard return to stop a scoring opportunity for Dallas. Here we're looking at second and seven. Ball's on the 29-yard line, 8.03 in the fourth quarter. Dallas is in 11 personnel. Now they're in trip speed alignment with all three wide receivers to the defensive right side in wide splits. Titans bogey and disguise a five-man pressure with Monty Rice bringing pressure off the edge from the second level. Number 95, Walker, wraps from the left to the right side. Number 93, Tierre Tart powers past the outside shoulder of the center, and the cylinder collapses on the quarterback with Tart and Walker sharing the sack for an eight-yard loss. I especially like that last play. Tier Tart's first career sack. He played a great game. He had six tackles, four quarterback pressures, 
that half sack, and also he recovered a fumble in that game. And of course, Demarcus Walker with a half sack. He now has seven on the season. Demarcus Walker is having an incredible season for the Titans. And you know where he's from? Tell me. Jacksonville, of Florida. He is. He's excited about going home. That's just one of the reasons he's this week's Nissan Insider. And that's next on Titans All Access. Welcome back to Titans All Access. Mike, sixth year defensive end, Demarcus Walker. He's played in every game this season and he's really making an impact. Yeah, 32 total tackles. We mentioned the seven sacks, six and a half stuffs. He's always around the ball and always making something happen. Really found a home with this team. Absolutely. So he seems like a good person to have as a Nissan insider, right? Uh, perfect. The Jacksonville native is up now. Combined to take him down. Hit. Sack! Walker gets him inside the 10. He hit. Sack! Demarcus Walker says, why did you let me go, Denver? Demarcus, are you having the best year of your career? Uh, statistically, you know, uh, yes, correct. Um, you know, uh, this has this been a blessing so far, and you know, to have a lot of success, you know, uh, it's been surreal. Cause I'm a hard worker, and, and you know, just to see the fruits, you know, of your labor pay off, start to pay off, you know, it's, it's surreal. Give me some players who've been that kind of influence on you. Practice-wise, when you, when you see Jeff um, practice hard, I mean, you see him run to the ball, like that's, you know, you see a big guy like that moving. It's two things as a as an adult you can do. Either kind of you know match that energy, or you fold. And you know I get I, I get paid a lot of money to play this game, so I matched it. Now these these guys practice hard, you know, and I mean they're they practice harder than some other teams, so that made me accept that challenge and better myself. Is it true that growing up in Jacksonville? your father had to be talked into letting you play football at the age of 15. Holy How do you get that, yo? How do you get that, yo? All right, so here's what happened, and here's the truth. In the seventh and eighth grade, I was a three-sport athlete. I did track, I did football, I did basketball, and I did track. And I played key roles in all three of those sports. We were, we were champions in all three of those sports, too. Undefeated. We only lost one game in basketball, so like my dad seen me, like I was starting, I was in football, I didn't come off the field. I played every special teams in offense and defense. In basketball, my dad seen me like, as the season went along, my role developed because I, my skills got better. In track, I was the, I was our best hurdler. I was our best mid distance runner and I was one of our fastest sprinters. So for me taking on that role for two years, I mean, during camp, during the summer too, during middle school, we had summer workouts. I had to drive a beach cruiser 5.7 miles every day during the week over summer during eighth grade to go for like football training. Driving to school and back. I mean, riding a bike to school, where everybody getting a ride and all that stuff. And uh, my dad saw that. So when ninth grade came around and um, he was like, no, I'm gonna let you take a break. And that was hot. That hurt me. I mean, I, I, I like grade school wise, I think that's probably like the only time where I was struggling because I just was too bored and having anything to do. And then, um, you know, uh, I'm thankful for that. I thank my dad for that day because my body needed a rest. My mind needed a rest. And when you fast forward to today, you know, um, a lot of guys was burned out from football and that wasn't the case for me. We're thankful you're here. Mm -hmm. It has been so much fun to watch you in, uh, in 2022 and uh, getting ready to go home to Jacksonville. Do you get a little fired up when you get to play in Jacksonville? You guys gonna see. You guys gonna see. That's all I can say. Welcome back to the Bet MGM studio and Titans All Access. Reminding you, as we will throughout the course of this show, Saturday night's Titans-Jags game in Jacksonville is a win and you're in game. The winner of this game is the AFC South champion and will be the number four seed in the AFC playoffs starting next weekend. This is not the first win and you're in situation for the Titans. It's actually happened now four times. 
but I wanted to bring in someone who had been involved in one of these before to talk about some of the dynamics of a win and your end game. So this week for our talking Ball presented by Duncan, I bring in one of my very favorite Titans, Bo Scaife. Bo, it is great to have you with us on Titans All Access. I'm glad to be back with you guys and talking with you guys, and I appreciate you guys checking up on me. So let's set the scene for your win and your end game. It's the last game of the season in 2007. You're playing at Indianapolis against the 13-2 Colts. They've already won the division, so they don't have anything to play for, but they've promised they're gonna play their starters. You have to sit around the hotel all day waiting for this game, win and you're in, pressure against Peyton Manning and the Colts. How do you handle that day leading up to the game? It's business as usual. Go out there, focus, play as hard as you can, and, and come out with the results you want. And I think, you know, when people hear the word playoffs, you know, there's a lot of things that come with that. So there's probably a little extra motivation. Titans get the ball first, go straight down the field, score a touchdown, take a 7 nothing lead. And guess what? Indianapolis is playing their starters. you got to feel great at this point. You're like, hey, man, we're off to a great start. And, and that's exactly how we felt. But, you know, it's the NFL. For us at that time, we needed our defense to play well. So, you know, obviously they got Jim Sorge in there. You know, let's not let him be any kind of pro bowler on this day. The Colts take out their number one units. They take out Peyton Manning and put in Jim Sorge at quarterback. But the Titans start losing fumbles. And all of a sudden, you find yourself behind 10 to seven in this win and you're in game. What, what's it like on the sideline at this moment? Pissed. Like, why, <laughs> why, why are we doing this to ourselves? And I think, you know, that's like a universal feeling for everybody. Like, why are we doing this to ourselves? That year and, you know, all the years I was at a Titan, we loved making things hard for ourselves and nothing ever came easy. We had to, you know, scratch and claw for every little bit. And it did work out in this particular game. Vince Young is the Titans quarterback and he's playing well, but he gets injured and has to come out of the game. He's replaced by Kerry Collins, who takes you guys home. What do you remember about playing with Kerry? You know, Kerry Collins was a guy that really helped those games. So, you know, I love Kerry Collins. You know, Kerry loved to throw me the ball. So we always had a, a, a silent but understood relationship where he would look at me, he would give me the head nod, and I understand exactly what he was saying. So Kerry was always a, a huge asset and a pickup for the Titans. All right, Boscape. So you have won a game in a win in your end game. What advice would you give to the current Titans players about what they need to do Saturday night in Jacksonville? These are long seasons that you work your ass off for. You know, you spend a whole year training just for these moments. Obviously, you know, you can't make mistakes. That's the thing that kills everything in big games is mistakes, turnovers. In big games like that, you need your players to, and your big play guys to, to make those plays and, and get you over that hump. And the bottom line, what this job is all about is making it to the postseason, and that's all that counts Saturday night in Jacksonville. Man, Mike, that's where everybody gets a raise when we go to postseason, so it's not just about us, right? We need everybody needs a little bit of extra change in their pocket, and the playoffs allow us to do that, and you're one step closer to that, you know, coveted Super Bowl ring, which I think only 3% of players and coaches win in the NFL. So we're used to beating these guys. So let's just go out there and continue what we've already been doing. Bo Scaife, you are the best. Love you. One of my favorite Titans. Thanks for being with us to reminisce and talking ball presented by Duncan. All right, Mike, man. Love you guys, man. See you soon. Welcome back to Titans All Access. Now, anybody who knows Derrick Henry knows that he loves to give back to the community, and he's genuine about it. He does it from the bottom of his heart. That's one of the reasons for the second year in a row. He is the Titans Walter Payton Man of the Year. And to give you another example of his generosity, we share the story of Miss Renita. She lost her home in the 2020 Nashville tornado. With the help of the Boys and the Girls Club, Derrick Henry stepped in to provide Miss Renita and her family with new furniture and rent to get through an impossible time. Watch this. Oh my God! I just want to say thank you so much, man. Words can't explain, man, how much this means to me, man. <laughs> thank you so, so, so much from the bottom of my heart. Thank, thank you so, thank you. so much. 
So back in 2020, when the tornado hit, me and my kids were, we were home, and we kept on hearing about, like, there was gonna be a tornado. A friend of mine called and said, take cover, because their windows had busted out. When we woke up, it was just like a disaster. We was out of power for like two weeks. The devastation of everything around us, our home, it was horrible. My kids have been part of the Boys and Girls Club for about seven years. I was telling them that, you know, we gave up a lot of stuff and we, what we could save, we put it in storage. And I had no idea that it was gonna be Derrick Henry. I just knew that our family was getting help. I did a Zoom call with a team, Nike team, and they shared with me, they just made it seem like we were just going for a Titans game and it was gonna be videotaped, but we had more in surprise. Hey, how y'all doing? Hello. We heard about your mom, Renita, and her story, and we were just so inspired that we just wanna do anything we can to help you guys. So we'll be taking care of your rent for the year and we gave you 12K at Ashley's Furniture to furnish your home. Thank you so, yes, so, so yes, much from the bottom of my heart. I can be at home with my kids at night now and just stop working so much so I can just spend time with them and see them grow and be there for them. Thank, Thank you so, you. so much. Before Derrick Henry came into play and with that blessing that we received, I was literally working three jobs. I'm now down to one job. I work at the Titan Stadium as the concessions manager for Levy Restaurant. And our life is, is so much better. Never a moment that we don't just think when we walk through the house and see our house is fully furniture, matching furniture, everybody have their own bed, everybody's comfortable. We still get chill bumps and we're so happy from it. Derek Henry is a hero to me. He's honestly, I mean, not just because of what he do, but just because he, he made me feel so special when he said that I had worth ethics like his grandmother. His grandmother is someone that he looked up to and that really, really made me happy. I know um, that he helped us, but one thing I wanted to do to show my appreciation, um, my son Landon, his goddad, helped us give Derek Henry some customized cliques in our own personal handwriting saying thanks for um, everything that he did. Very nice. Thank you, Derrick Henry, for being thoughtful and helping us out. You are such a big help. Thank you. Thank y'all so much. I love your cleats. Ja, you did a great job. Even got the face right. 2K Club. Fire. I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all again. Welcome back to Titans All Access. It is time for the Hughes and Coleman decision of the week. And the Tennessee Titans brought in Joshua Dobbs, former Volunteers quarterback, and then started him eight days later. Mike Keith, Good decision? Yes, that's why he'll start again <laughs> this Saturday in Jacksonville against the Jaguars. Joshua Dobbs has been in the NFL for six years. He sat in some great quarterback rooms with some wonderful quarterbacks and some great coaches. And what he showed against Dallas and what he'll show against Jacksonville is he knows how to do the job. He understands the operation of the offense, how you call the plays, how you run the huddle, how you change plays at the line and getting guys in the absolute right position. Plus, he knows where the ball's supposed to go. Yes, he is an aerospace engineering graduate from the University of Tennessee. Most people refer to him as Astro Dobbs because he is such a smart guy and he would like at some point to go into space. But the bottom line is, he's a very good athlete, he's a very good quarterback, and he'll give the Titans a chance to win Saturday night in Jacksonville. One more note, do you know where he became a star? No. In Jacksonville, in the Gator Bowl, he had his best performance to date in leading Tennessee to a win over Iowa. And for the next two years, he became one of the best quarterbacks ever to wear orange and white. So maybe history repeats. Did you call him a star because of the space thing? You're quick. I know. <laughs> and because you're so quick, it's time for your Titans game ticket. 
Amy Wells, tell everyone what they need to know about Saturday's game. Well, that's a good point, Mike Keith, because it is on Saturday. The Tennessee Titans are taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars this Saturday night at 7.15 p.m. Central Time at TIAA Bank Field. Whoever wins this game will win the AFC South title and a chance to host a playoff game. The Jaguars are led by second-year quarterback Trevor Lawrence. He's thrown for nearly 4,000 yards and 24 touchdowns. Running back Travis Etienne has rushed for more than 1,100 yards and five touchdowns. Receivers Christian Kirk and Zay Jones, along with tight end Evan Ingram, have accounted for 16 total touchdowns. And on the other side of the ball, Josh Allen has tallied six sacks, 10 tackles for loss, two passes defense, three forced fumbles, and one fumble recovery. Three Jags lead the way with three interceptions each. Andre Sisco, Rayshon Jenkins, Devin Lloyd. Also on special teams, the Titans must keep Jamal Agnew in check to avoid giving up a costly return. And you can't turn the ball over. Absolutely not. That's what the Titans did in the game back on December the 11th that they lost to Jacksonville. Four turnovers. They need to take it away, not give it away. That's a key to this ball game coming up Saturday night in Jacksonville. And we'll remind you that Amy Wells, Rhett Bryan, Coach Dave McGinnis, and me will be on the call for Titans Radio. Titans Countdown hits the air at 6 o'clock Central Time coming up this Saturday night. It's for all the marbles in the AFC South, Titans and the Jags. For Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. We look forward to seeing you next time after a win. Woohoo!